everyone, it's Meg and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some autumn book recommendations. We are now getting into the autumn content and if you have not watched the my autumn TBR video, the books that I want to read during autumn, I will leave that in the description down below. That's kind of the first of these couple of autumnal themed videos that I have for you guys and I'm very excited to film them. So the second one that I'm doing that's kind of autumnal themed is some book recommendations to read during autumn and I feel like quite a lot of people obviously because it's like Halloween also in October during autumn like to read a lot of spooky books whether that's like mystery or horror or thrillers and I don't read any of those so you are not really going to get any on here there is one mystery book on here um, but the rest aren't and I know a lot of other people like to read fantasy and also kind of like those like slightly spookier books and some more like hard-hitting books in historical fiction and I feel like I've got a fairly good selection of books to share with you guys. Obviously this is my own interpretation of books that I would personally read during autumn. Obviously you can interpret it how you want but these are my personal recommendations through my taste. So I have about six or seven books to share with you guys today so without further ado let's get into the video. The first book that I have on this list is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaffer and Annie Barrows. I feel like historical fiction is something that quite a lot of people tend to prioritise a bit more during like autumn, like the colder months and winter. I don't know why, I just there must be some sort of cosy aspect to it to a certain extent. Obviously it depends on the historical fiction because some of it can be very hard hitting and some of it is very lovely and heartwarming. And I haven't talked about this book for a while on my channel and if you do not know, this book follows our main character named Juliet and she is a writer and a journalist living in London and this book is set post World War II and one day she receives a letter from this guy who lives in Guernsey and they basically strike up a relationship and they write back and forth and Juliet learns about this guy's life and also all the other people who lived on Guernsey during the Nazi occupation and I, the reason, I've never really been into historical fiction much, mainly like world war ones because I have no interest in the world wars, it just, it's just something I've never been interested in reading but I heard good things about this so I picked it up last year and I fell in love with it. I feel like if you are somebody who loves stories and you love character driven stories you will adore this book. It's This book is told in letter format through the letters that Juliet sends and receives from all these people in Guernsey and also the other people who live around in the UK who are in her life such as her best friend and her publicist and her and his sister and all those sort of characters and it's just got so much charm. It is quite hard hitting and uh, emotional at times when you hear about some of the stories and kind of what these characters have gone through during the World War and how they were treated by the Nazis in Germany and all the rules that they had to abide by but there's a warmth in this and there's a charm in it at the same time and I just really adore this book. I feel like it is quite popular just for the fact that it is a film but if you haven't picked this book up or if you are willing to or even want to give historical fiction a go I definitely recommend picking up this book. It's very short, it's under 300 pages I believe. It's Yeah it's just under 300 pages. It's an absolutely charming read. You will fall in love with these characters and yeah like I said I feel like historical fiction is just something that a lot of people tend to love especially during autumn and winter and the colder months so this is my first recommendation next up we have a classic and that is Anna Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery and some of you may wonder why I am recommending this book but if you have read it then you'll probably know why obviously this is a very well loved book I'm sure you will have heard about it if you are watching this video but the reason why I'm doing this for like an autumn recommendation is because Obviously Anne is living on this island, she lives on Prince Edward Island 
and the writing is very descriptive and very vivid of the landscape. You see Anne grow up into a young adult throughout these novels, but you also see the seasons change and how the island changes as well. So you get, there is a part in this first book at any rate about autumn and how Anne describes autumn. There are a couple of quite famous quotes actually that are in this book uh, that relate around autumn. And I just think that's the reason why I'm recommending this because obviously autumn is a lot of things but also the main thing about autumn is obviously the seasons changing, it's the leaves on the trees turning to a beautiful fiery colour, it's the frost on the ground, it's that kind of crackling magic that's in the air, it's the new food that you see that's harvesting, it's the light that's changing and that's all, these are all things that are captured in here and Anne loves Octobers, obviously there is a very famous quote in that from this book and that is honestly why I'm recommending it. If you are somebody who really loves the seasons changing in autumn and you love everything about the landscape in autumn and the nature and everything that goes with it, I feel like you should definitely pick this one up during autumn because even though it does obviously have all the other seasons in this book, it also obviously has autumn and I love the the painting that Ellen Montgomery paints of autumn in Prince Edward Island in Avonlea because I would love to go there during autumn, not gonna lie. Um, so if you are a lover of the autumnal landscape I think you should definitely pick this one up. Next up we have the only mystery book or only sort of more true Halloween-esque book that's on this list and that is Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James. And I put this, reading this off ages, I read it last year, I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to, and this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling, and it is set after Pride and Prejudice, the main story, when Darcy and Elizabeth are married and they have kids, and basically everybody is meant to come around for this winter ball, and then Lydia Bennett, Lizzie's sister, shows up unannounced and saying that her husband is dead and it is a whole murder mystery it's like a who done it sort of mystery and i was skeptical going into this i have heard a lot of good things and i did end up enjoying it and obviously if you are a lover of pride and prejudice i feel like this is a staple or well, it doesn't have to be but i feel like it's a pretty good retelling i feel like it does definitely stay true to the characters in this the, there's only one character I don't think stays true, or as true, I didn't like as much as compared in the original novel. Um, but obviously it is a spooky book, it's slightly spooky, it's slightly eerie, it's not like anything scary or anything like that. But I feel like it's a very clever book and I feel like it plays off the original story very well but also standing on its own at the same time and I was really pleased with how kind of everything wrapped up. I feel like that was just really well done because sometimes books and I guess I've never really read a mystery before but I guess sometimes they're left with quite loose ends or you figure it out beforehand but I honestly did not figure out who the killer was in this book until they revealed it and I was like oh okay so if you are looking for a new mystery and you are a fan of Prime Prejudice I definitely think you should pick this up you don't have to read Prime and Prejudice before reading this book, but I would recommend that you do because obviously then you get familiar with the characters first. Next up we have Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen and this is another classic. I must admit this is probably my least favourite book on this list, um, but it's still Jane Austen and I feel like it's a very appropriate autumn slash Halloween read because this is also kind of spooky and this follows our main character. I just genuinely cannot remember what she's called, she's called Catherine. That's how much you can tell I enjoyed this book. Um, and it is about her and she meets these siblings who live in this abbey called Northanger Abbey. And I know that this book kind of pokes fun at the society of when this book was written. And Catherine believes in like all these heroines, she reads a lot and she's into like all these stories about all these spooky things you can tell how much I've forgotten how to read this but I know a lot of people really enjoyed this book unfortunately I didn't love it as much as everyone else but like I said I want to recommend it because I feel like it's a book that's very appropriate for this time of year you can read it any time of year um, 
and it has that spooky aspect to it because obviously she goes and stays at this castle with these siblings who she doesn't know very well and she kind of believes that there is like really a ghost or something weird and mysterious going on. Um, I, still, I didn't mind it but like I said it's the least favourite on my list but a lot of people have loved it so I'm still going to recommend this and I hope you will really enjoy this book more than I did because I was really gutted that I didn't love this as much as I hoped I was going to. Next up we have a contemporary and that is The Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne. There's something about hard-hitting contemporaries that just seem, they kind of get me. There's something that I want to read during the autumn. I guess it's maybe because the weather's a little bit darker, it's a bit more dreary and moody and I don't know, like I love reading them all time of year but I feel like especially kind of during the autumn and winter, they're the tender the books that I tend to pick up and also this book is kind of mainly set over like autumn winter kind of that first part of like the school term where it's like autumn winter you know that sort of thing and this follows our main character called I don't I'm gonna butcher her name I've done this last time I talked about it it's either Emile or Emily I'm really sorry but I can't pronounce it right but it's basically about our main character and she moves down south because her dad gets a new job and she doesn't know anybody there. She's starting her first day of college and she meets this guy called Reese and their relationship spirals and very quickly and it builds very quickly and then it this book is told during the relationship when it's happening and after the relationship is broken up and our main character, Emile, I'm really sorry, I'm probably saying her name wrong, is kind of looking back and kind of realising that the relationship she had with Reese probably wasn't uh, everything that she thought it was when they were together and she's kind of realising the faults and the damage that it has done to her and how much it has affected her and other people in her life as well. And this is such a hard hitting book, it's so important and I really enjoyed this book. I have didn't don't think I've ever read a book that deals with toxic relationships before picking this book up and I feel like this is a book that everybody should read. It's something that I found really educational and eye-opening but yeah I really love this book. There's just something about hard-hitting contemporaries that I just love to read especially during kind of like the darker colder months and I haven't heard too many people talk about this book but what I have seen it's amazing so if you are looking to get into Holly Bourne I definitely recommend picking this up this is currently her latest YA novel she does have one coming out next year I think it's either next year or beginning of or end of this year can't remember but I highly recommend you go and pick this book up if you haven't already it is wonderful important heartbreaking and Again, just the kind of genre that I tend to gravitate towards during autumn. Second to last book on this list, or more of a series actually, both of these last books are first books in a series. And the first series I have to recommend is The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. And this is kind of a paranormal-esque story. I'm sure quite a few of you have heard of both of these tr these series that I'm talking going to talk about. And obviously this is about our main character named Blue and she is from a family of psychics and she is the only person in her family who doesn't have psychic abilities and she meets these four boys who are called, she calls them the Raven Boys and they are trying to find this king, this dead Welsh king and this trilogy, trilogy, this um, series even just basically goes about their journey of trying to find this dead Welsh king and they come across a load of spirits and magical beings and ghosts and all sorts of things throughout the series and the way for me for this reading this series was definitely audiobook I actually nearly didn't carry on with the series after the second book but if you are going to pick this book, this series up, I definitely recommend the audiobook. The guy who does it, I don't know what his name is, what the narrator's name is, but he does an amazing job. He does really distinct voices and there's quite a lot of Latin in this book. It is like one of the key languages in this book. So, and he obviously, he, he knows how to pronounce it correctly. 
Um, so if you're going to pick the series up, I definitely recommend the audiobook. It's like, he makes it like super eerie as well and just really brings that vibe of these books. Um, so I wish I had read the whole series via audiobook because I really would have loved that. But I feel like, again, if you are, are looking for that sort of paranormal s book but also has like really wonderful relationships and friendships and tackles other topics as well as obviously this journey of finding this dead king uh, I think you'll really enjoy the series it's a, a series that I know a lot of people have loved I probably don't need to talk about it a lot more um, but yeah if you are going to pick this up I definitely recommend the audiobook because I really enjoyed the audiobooks and I feel like it just adds like that extra level of like immersiveness when you are listening to it. And the last book I have on this list is the first book in a trilogy and that is the Caraval Trilogy by Stephanie Garber. This is a series I started reading way back in 2016 I think. I read the first book and this was only my second fantasy book I'd ever read and I would actually like to reread the first book fairly soon. Um, because I feel like I would get a lot more out of it and enjoy it a lot more because I've read a couple and by a couple I probably mean about two or three more fantasy books since I last read this book. Um, but if you don't know what the story is about it is a obviously it's a fantasy novel and it is about a magical game called Caraval and there are two sisters called T Tella and Scarlet and Tella has wanted to go to this magical game for years and she writes to Master Legend who is the person in charge of Caraval every year and one day she gets an invitation so her and her sister run away from their abusive father to this game and basically Tella goes missing and Scarlet has to win the game in order to find her sister and that is the very beginning of this book, like there is so much more to it. This series escalates into so much more after the first book. And the second book, which is legendary, is definitely my favourite of the series. I read that last year and then I read the third book last year and then I finished it off um, beginning of this year because I just put it down for a while. Not just because I wasn't enjoying it, but I think just because it was so much fantasy, I think I just got a little bit overwhelmed. But I do really enjoy this series, it's so much fun, like it is quite dark and eerie, obviously I feel like quite the majority of fantasies are quite dark, um, but it's so much fun and you really really love the characters. The first book in this trilogy is told from Scarlet's perspective, second one it, Legendary is told from Teller's and the third one is told by both of their perspectives. Um, and it's just such a fun series. I love the world and the magic system and they have all these other elements into it as well and I think it's so much fun. Again, it's a series that's quite popular so you probably will have heard of it but I think I'm going to have to reread this fairly soon. Maybe during autumn, I don't know, we will see. Um, but yeah, this is the last book on my list. So those are all the books I am going to share with you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that maybe you found some recommendations that you would possibly like to read from this pile. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these books. I feel like reading tastes are obviously, they are so personal. I know that a lot of people tend to read a lot of dark books and these, quite a few of these books are a little bit darker compared to what I would generally read. but. Obviously, like I said, on this channel I don't really read fantasy, I don't really read like thrillers and mysteries and all that sort of thing. Um, but I hope, I feel like there's a relatively good mixture of books here so I hope you find something that you might possibly want to pick up and I hope you enjoy it. And also let me know in the comments some books that you plan on reading during autumn or some books that you think are kind of autumnal themed that you like to specifically read in the autumn and the winter months because I would love to know as always. If you like this video then please make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you would like to see more bookish videos from me then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you'll be noted every time I post a new video. As always I will leave the links to my social media along with the links to my goodreads in the description down below for you guys. But thank you guys so much for watching, I appreciate you so so much and I will see you again very soon. Bye.